Loss comes in many forms, and usually in unexpected ways. It can be devastating, leaving you facing an uphill struggle to go on with life without someone you thought would always be there. But life does go on, and even in the deepest despair, we can find hope. Welcome to Grief Relief with your hosts, Drs. Gloria and Heidi Horsley, brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation, helping people find hope after loss. And now here's Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi. Welcome to our show. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley with my co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, we've got a great show today and a really important one because there are a lot of people who've lost their spouse and it's a, it's a tough thing. So let's get started with Reverend Gieselman. Okay, very good. Hi, can Reverend. We, can we call you Rob? Hi. Absolutely. Please call me Rob. <laughs> All right, Rob, great. We want to thank you for being on our show today and again taking your time to, to come and talk about uh, your losses and hope and healing and that kind of thing. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I, we've really liked your book, haven't we, Heidi? Oh my goodness, it's, it's a great and book. And show it to us, yeah. It's a really easy read and bring tissue because it is, it will tug at your heart. Yeah, it does. You're, you're, you're an excellent yes. writer. Oh, thank you. You really, you really are. are. And we love the piece about, well, well, why don't you talk about how it is? Well, first talk about your losing your wife and, and uh, that experience and her name and the kids and, that you've, and all that. Well, uh, obviously losing a spouse is, is one of the most significant events in life. Uh, and most of us don't expect to do it as young as I was. I was uh, 43 years old mm -hmm. when Laura died, and uh, and it was sudden. It was unexpected. Even though she'd been sick, she had not been sick to the point of dying, and she died after gallbladder surgery. Mm. So waking up to find her and then to address the kids was, was, I mean, not only life changing. It it it. It, it moved me into a completely different universe. Mm -hmm. uh, all of a sudden, I was a single father, and um, and even as a, a spiritual person in a church, you know, um, I was challenged with what does that really mean. So it really was a, a big change in my life. And, yeah. and and I imagine you probably worked with a lot of people that had been grieving and had loss, but until you've experienced it. It's a whole other thing once you experience it. You know, it's really true. I had uh, planned on writing a book about death anyway because I had um, had the privilege, and it's a privilege to be in a room when someone loses somebody. There's something, mm -hmm. uh, when, when it's a death that's anticipated, there's something um, intimate about that moment. And I wanted to write about that, but when, when Laura died, um, that became the obvious platform, frankly, mm -hmm. and, uh, and a sad platform. Mm -hmm. uh, we had someone tell us, uh, one reverend that we had on our show who made the comment that um, he really didn't quite get how painful it was until it happened to him. That's exactly right. In fact, one of my favorite stories is, is you know, every Sunday after church, I stand at the door and greet people as they're leaving and ask how they're doing. Well, after Laura died for, for a long, long time, people wanted to know how I was doing. And they would say, how are you doing? And I would answer fine, regardless of who was asking me. And those people who had not lost a spouse and wanted me to be okay said, mm -hmm. good, I'm really happy that you're doing better. And those who had lost a spouse would look at me and say, I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I knew they, they knew something that, that other people just didn't get about yeah. me now. So what are some tips that you have for people? I mean, uh, for one thing, I think there's some people uh, who haven't been to church for a long time who, the, can they go back to their religion? I mean, you know, do you have them, if they need that consolation? I've seen many people after they lose a spouse return to religion. And, and uh, it's not a groping for God, it is a looking for a deeper meaning and a, a way to place this hole in their heart in the universe. Mm -hmm. And so yes, Absolutely, it's an opportune time because, because while some people do react and, and, and perhaps blame God for the death of the spouse, many people just have this hole, this place that, that something's missing and they're looking, they're looking for that. And, and faith uh, provides solace. Mm -hmm. It really does. You know, um, Heidi and I talk about community and uh, I once, we, I interviewed a man um, who was a, a reverend, and I said, when my son died, 
uh, I really did not find the theology of my religion helpful. And I, I said, but I found the people fabulous. And he said to me, <laughs> he laughed, and he said, that is your religion. That is God. God works through his people. It is all of that. It is absolutely all. <laughs> and one person will find it through the faith, and another person will find it through the community. And, and the tenets of the faith aren't important at that point. They really aren't. Yeah. They're not going to provide that guidance, but the people are, and the care, and the love, and the support, uh -huh. um, and the prayers, and the place, and the... You know, I, I believe there's actually some research also that shows that people of faith do have, uh, show a little less mm. stress going mm. through, and I, I have a feeling that's probably due to community. Well, as you know, it, it, going through the grief process um, is hard no matter who you are, regardless of faith, but... Uh, but it does help to have both family and a community. Mm -hmm. And you said making doubt. meaning somehow. Making of meaning. Of the loss, I think, is really important. Absolutely. And, um, and for me, that meaning is not only in writing about it, but it also is through my kids, raising mm -hmm. the kids and wanting to, to impart something to them that would be lasting that they were not going to have otherwise because they lost their mom. Mm -hmm. Is there anything unique about being a single guy? As um, opposed to a woman, are there any any differences? Gosh, I, 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 the pain is I don't think any different. I mean, I think the pain of losing somebody is the same regardless, but our roles aren't as naturally um, um, towards the maternal. You know, we don't naturally turn towards the maternal. So, so, so from a parenting standpoint, perhaps as far as from a spousal standpoint. Um, I think there clearly is. I, I, I know from my own observation, men are far more likely to get married within a year mm -hmm. than women are. And it's often because they're trying to replace what mm -hmm. they had. It's not a bad thing necessarily. It's just there, there's this yeah. back to this hole. And what was the hardest thing about raising children as a single parent? Oh. I know uh, it's probably, I don't know if that's hard to say because there's probably a, a lot of things, right? You know, the hard, the, for me, the emotionally, the most, emotionally wrenching part was was uh, when they wanted a mom yeah. and there I am you know and and they're crying for their mom and they're crying for their mom yeah. and and we had we had and you can't those. you can't fix it you can't fix that you, you want to fix it for your kids and make it better and help them exactly and also I imagine while you're, you're grieving it's hard I think for parents because you, here you are grieving but yet you're also needing to help your children through their grief, grief process and I will say maybe that's a plus of having walked with so many people through mm -hmm. grief but I knew enough of what was going on with me that at times I could put it aside and say, you know, talk to me mm -hmm. and ask them about it. And I, what I would say to any parent who loses a spouse and is raising children is, is keep the conversation open mm -hmm. with the kids. That can be really hard with teenagers too. Wow. Well, Keeping and my kids were, I will say my kids were younger, well, you know, they were eight and five. Yeah. So it, that was a little easier for me. But you're well, right. listen, thank you so much for uh, sharing that with us oh. today. This has been Grief Relief, hosted by the mother-daughter team of Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi Horsley. This show has been brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation, helping people find hope after loss. Be sure to visit Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi at opentohope.com, where you can listen to radio programs, watch past episodes of Grief Relief, read articles, and view books. You can also join them on Twitter and Facebook and put your events on their international calendar. Thanks for watching, and remember, Others have been there and made it, and you can too.